everyone for joining the Hong Kong STP stage. So we are now uh, starting the innovator track. Um, I'm very honored that we have invited Lisa, the co-founder and CEO of Fivespan. She will present the topic on how open banking APIs are changing the face of business banking. So I think Lisa has uh, shared her screen and I should So I just pass the floor to Lisa, uh, please start now. Great, thank you everybody. Um, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, sorry I can't see you. Evening here in Vancouver, uh, morning in Hong Kong. Uh, so let's get stuck in. Uh, as, as mentioned, my name is Lisa Shields. I'm the founder and CEO of a Canadian company called Fispan. And what we wanted to talk to, to you today about is the business arm of the bank and how an API strategy can really inform and grow the business for the benefit of both the bank and its customers. So specifically in the 20 minutes that's been allotted to me today, um, there are four things I'd really like to cover. First of all, a little bit about Fispan and why we're here and why we feel um, maybe you know, competent to speak uh, on this subject. Secondly, what are some of the trends that we're seeing driving APIs in the corporate and commercial banking arm of the sector? And if a bank is um, thinking about adopting APIs within its corporate and business banking uh, sector, what are some of the elements of an API strategy that might inform some approaches a bank might make as they enter this era? And finally, what we're seeing as the future of open business banking. So introducing ourselves a little bit, uh, Fispan is a four-year-old fintech startup based in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's my second fintech startup. I founded and ran a global payments business for 15 years that did uh, cross-border B2B services. So I have some experience working with corporates and understanding some of their needs. Um, but as I said, Fispan's my second company and we saw an opportunity really driven by some market dynamics to put the bank at the focus of the customer journey even if those customer endpoint experiences maybe aren't being provided by the banks and do that in a way that is bank first and bank friendly. So the first point about Fispan is treasury banks are our customers. The second point about us is we are absolutely an API company, you know, founded in the cloud in 2016, cloud, you know, cloud first, cloud forever. And finally, and probably most importantly for the banks in the audience today, we fundamentally believe that open banking and open data in particular is an incredibly valuable opportunity to banks that can understand and harness the power of trusted data exchange and the ability to both emit and consume APIs and open data for the benefit of the bank and its relationship with its business customers. So that all sounds a little bit, you know, sort of 30,000 foot view, but what, what does Fispan actually do in practice? In practice, what we do is we provide a cloud-based platform that is API driven and acts as a many to many bridge between the applications that your business customers are going to be using and the data that's behind those, you know, corporate firewalls uh, that can be advantageous to the bank data, uh, the bank customer relationship. And of course, the bank domain and the many platforms and services that sit behind the bank firewall. Specifically, what Fispan really does is enable a new business banking channel for banks, which is accounting and ERP applications. So drilling into what we mean by a cloud-based platform that's API driven is on our interface with banks, our engineers will integrate once with the business facing products and services of the bank, whether or not they've been exposed by APIs. And so we insulate your customers from the stage that the bank might be on its API journey. And on the other side, which is the left-hand side of this slide, we have real-time bi-directional data exchanges with the most important accounting and ERP applications 
that your customers are using or that a bank's business customers are using. Um, and finally, and most importantly, Fispen's an example of a, of a provider and a new API type company that's providing in-app experiences within these platforms to unify business applications and financial services. And we'll get to a little bit about what that might look like in the end, um, but the purpose of this, se of this segment um, isn't to be an advertisement for Fispan. It's to talk about from a bank's perspective, what might be some of the market trends that we're seeing um, in bringing APIs into corporate and commercial banking. And broadly speaking, we see three real trends that are driving digital innovation and specifically in business banking um, that are predicated and informed and benefit from APIs. The first trend that we see is the rise of omni-channels. The second really important trend that we're seeing is that businesses often feel neglected by traditional banks. And when we say neglected by the bank, we really mean neglected by the brittleness of the bank's existing products and services. And finally, the trend driving, you know, digital innovation and APIs is, of course, you know, the regulatory imperative. So an open banking regulation that might deem to a bank, thou must provide balance and transactions to any application that wants to consume that. Uh, we see this typically first and foremost in the retail sector, right, to an individual consumer customer of the bank. But increasingly, we're seeing that same imperative be imposed on business services that a bank might offer. Um, but what's important for us and the message that we want to um, leave as a takeaway is that all three of these trends are powered by the rise of APIs and all three of these trends can be harnessed by the bank for its benefit, really, um, with the adoption of a treasury banking and a business banking API strategy. So first, drilling into what we mean by um, each of these trends and the easiest one to you know, really accept and it's a bit of motherhood, really. But we talk about the rise of omnichannel. And, you know, of course, first comes the branch. Um, and then comes the digital branch, right? And so if you think about um, online banking that's now what, 20 years old, 25 years old, um, it's the digital equivalent of a bank branch. And at first it had a relatively small number of services that were available online. But what's important in this new paradigm is online banking and indeed, you know, even today's treasury portal, business online banking, if you will, the customer comes to the property that's owned and managed by the bank and the primary data exchange between your customer and your bank using that channel is by you know, your customers, humans explicitly interacting with that channel. Um, and then, of course, we all move to mobile banking and you know, business mobile banking, um, a great um, improvement in usability for your customers. Um, but it's still mobile banking still retain those same two properties. Um, one is built by the bank, managed by the bank. It's a bank branded app that your customers are engaging with. And it uses humans as the primary data exchange uh, mechanism. What we're seeing with APIs is a real sea change in the market and the possibility of the market. So this final channel, which we call you know, third party developer ecosystems, will be the most powerful, both for the bank and for its customers. And in particular, this channel can only exist with two, two things. One, accessible bank APIs and partnerships between banks and third party applications and or third party developers to enable these new kind of experiences. Um, what's interesting is these new kind of experiences can yield just immense benefit to customers. And I'll pause here and give an example of an immense benefit 
of enabling the bank to be present in a real-time data exchange with its business customers. Um, if you think about you know, accounts payable, for example, your customers have an ERP and they have you know, their entitlements and they have their internal controls um, and they have very rich data sets that have, you know, here's all my vendors, they're all registered in my ERP. Here's my staff, here's who's you know, registered this vendor, um, entered its payments details, entered its invoice, who's approved it. When it comes to interacting with that object, that vendor relationship and that invoice object, the bank really only sees the outcome in a brittle, you know, very uh, data stripped way, which is in the form of an instruction to move N dollars um, or N euros to a certain other endpoint, a certain other bank account. With real-time APIs and data exchange, it's not so much about just automating that payment instruction in moving from a file format to an API, that's just you know, a, a technological detail. The real opportunity in API banking is the enrichment of the bank's understanding of its customer by virtue of data coming as much into the bank through open banking and open data as it is going out of the bank. And in that specific example that I just cited, which is, um, you know, a uh, accounts payable with an ERP integration. Obviously, all of those invoice objects and those approval objects and those internal controls can be conveyed to the bank, and it can now not just execute the payment, but it can offer you know information about which transaction might be higher risk in a real time and, and actionable way for its customer. So this is what we mean by um, this third this evolution of this third omni-channel has the potential to be the most powerful for the bank. Right, and so when we take, say number two, you know, the second major trend that banks, the businesses are starting to feel neglected by the traditional banks. Um, we see this manifested in the rise of, you know, competitors, right? Neo banks and third parties that can now through technology meet specific needs of specific classes of business users in a more specific, you know, in a more particular way than any one bank could with its own horizontal offering. And, you know, and on this slide, we're just giving sort of three examples of different use cases or customer segments. And in the case of, um, you know, in, in the case of, um, services for the gig economy. Uh, the gig economy really didn't exist 15 years ago when banks were building their you know, digital channel strategy. So it's not surprising that a third party can come up and you know, provide fantastic services. A neobank can offer specific loans in a way very unique to this customer segment. Um, the point of this is you know, businesses, it's not going to be a one size fits all um, environment anymore. And so APIs and a commercial banking API strategy can offer a way for a bank to decide, you know, what's core to its business and what am I going to own and have as my brand and my brand experiences? And what, through my API and partnerships, can I allow other applications to serve the needs of, needs of this customer segment while still maintaining me as the incumbent and trusted, you know, service provider? Oh, and finally, you know, the third trend that obviously is driving a lot of the discourse in the market, particularly in financial services and with banks, is, of course, you know, the regulatory imperative um, and open banking regulations. At Fispan, and when I founded Fispan, um, a learned person, you know, suggested that I found the business and point our product and services at Europe because of PSD2 and the open banking regulation. Um, but I really intentionally decided that I didn't want to be a um, compliance uh, service tick box, that the power of open banking and, you know, more, more excitedly described as open data exchange is really on the commercial opportunity, right? The, the forward opportunity to better serve, um, not the, you know, tick box that I need to do to 
um, stay compliant with my regulators. So we've really focused um, our commercial efforts in markets where you know they're either yellow, um, which we're here we have those are the, the facilitative in, um, approach to regulatory or market driven. And again, that's because we view APIs and open banking as an opportunity primarily for banks who are our customers, not a threat. So having said that, um, how you know how what might one go about if one is a treasury bank who hasn't had a lot of attention uh, from you know your technology team and your API team who've been busy on the, the retail side um, to build an API strategy and actually see it come to light? Well, you know, not surprisingly, the strategic considerations really don't differ from you know your colleagues over on the retail side of the bank. Um, the first strategic decision is who is going to be your audience? Um, are you really looking at third party developers or are you a bank that has a lot of wholesale uh, commercial customers who might have you know, different high volume, but um, more particular use cases around the APIs? And that might start to you know, dictate what kind of services you're going to expose and in what order. Um, the second and you know probably the most strategic consideration is what's going to be your monetization around this. We're seeing a lot of talk in, in, in Europe and in particular in Africa around premium APIs that are open, um, but they're just you know, the APIs themselves are the source of monetization. Uh, at Fispen, we don't see that so much in North America. In the United States, what we see with our banks, um, and I think I opened with, we service um, seven of the top 40 banks in North America, including JP Morgan Chase, uh, for their mid-market commercial uh, business. And so we don't see APIs as the primary uh, monetization strategy. What we do see is the opportunity for API-driven application endpoints to um, absolutely drive more transactional volume over core services like payments. Um, and also drive deposits. So that's the second um, arm of the leg. Uh, and then finally, you know, how am I going to go about it? Um, am I going to, you know, buy an API platform, develop it in house, or you know, partner with somebody? And then finally, and and the second most important one, we believe actually, that's often under you know overlooked by banks, and this is where the likes of the stripes um, really excel, is what kind of developer experience. You know, almost irrespective of who that you know who those end developer audiences are, but what kind of developer experience do I really want to deliver? Um, and and that's going to be key on you know how quickly you can actually make your fintech partnerships come to life, or indeed if you do want to have a more open play, you know how are you going to attract and be the platform of choice? Um, you know, quick temperature check of what what we see on the curve corporate side, right, corporate and commercial APIs, is that the vast majority of banks today have private APIs. And so they've talked about this from a technology perspective. There's been uh, great investment and a lot of work going uh, on ensuring that their APIs uh, connect in inter apps within the bank domain. Um, but there's not so many banks that have actually opened APIs fully so that Bob and Doug McKenzie can actually, you know, come up with new, some new great uh, business service and just go about and, you know, connect it up. But we're seeing this trend to move to partner APIs, where a bank may strike a partnership with a specific fintech for, you know, off balance sheet lending or something, um, or loan turn down referrals, and those partnerships can be greatly enriched, um, both in the initial, you know. Uh, forwarding of customers and then the ongoing servicing, and in particular, ensuring the bank has ongoing data visibility to the relationship and, and how that fintech is being used by the bank's mutual customers. So this mid-section that we're showing here, partner APIs, is currently what we see as the market sweet spot for a commercial bank to think about when developing its strategies. Um, you know, and no presentation can be considered complete today without a two by two matrix. So here's one from InnoPay. And on this slide, you know, we've mapped the richness of functional capability on the Y axis. You know, basically think about that as 
what would be possible to build with this bank's API set and the ease of use for the developer experience on the X access, you know, basically, you know, how much will engineers love or hate working um, with the services offered by this bank? Um, and what's really interesting from our perspective is the relative scarcity of banks in the coveted top right hand quadrant of this market. Um, so, you know, there's lots of opportunities to, you know, start and embark upon this journey even today. Um, and I want to make one caveat. That this certainly isn't a uh, five span slide. This is done by Inno InnoPay and it considers both retail and um, commercial APIs. Um, so as a strategy recap, you know, um, how how would I prepare my bank to, you know, be ready to both react to these trends and, and maybe, you know, position to uh, benefit uh, from the, the market tailwinds? And first is to develop, identify the developer audience that you're intending for your APIs and what that distribution channel is going to look like, um, you know, critically determine your monetization strategy. Is it gonna be around deepening my customer relationship, um, a deeper share of wallet like we're seeing in North America, or is it gonna be around direct monetization of services that I've exposed through APIs through third parties? Um, consider your, your, you know, your actual implementation strategy and really, really think about the developer experience that your um, directed audience is gonna look for. So finally, where do we see the future of open business banking um, heading? Um, we do see vertical fintechs as um, aggressively um, viewing deep participation in ERP ecosystem as a differentiator for their services versus banks. And this absolutely is a threat to banks and was part of my motivation for starting Fispan. And just to bring this into light, what we show on this slide is what we mean by that. If you are a bank that has currently enjoys the payable business of your corporate customers, um, but your corporate customers need to interact with your applications, um, you're at a disadvantage to incumbents. Um, and I see Kathy back on, so um, I think I'm getting the hook. Um, and so, sorry, Kathy, am I getting the hook? Uh, yes, I think you can uh, uh, web up in uh, this minute. Okay, so I'm actually on slide 22 of 23. Um, so I will just say that um, APIs, like in conclusion, for banks and corporate banks, APIs are an absolute business opportunity and should be considered about enriching your view of your customer, um, not threatening it. And see, I was at the last slide, so thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. It's a great presentation. I think you, when you talk about the private ABI, open ABI is very interesting trend. So if you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to Lisa and you can see her profile here. And then um, you can also visit uh, Vicebrand's website and then I'm sure you will have an a interesting opportunity with Lisa. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks.